Hello and welcome to episode 14 of OperaVision's Next Generation series. I'm Nina Brazier, a stage director based in Frankfurt, and over this series we've been diving into four European Young Artist programmes, Opera for Peace, the Rossini Opera Festival in Pesaro, Oper Frankfurt and Palau de les Arts in Valencia, exploring how the opera world is developing and nurturing the next generation of talent. Today we're back in Paris with Opera for Peace at their second academy, taking place at the Cité Internationale Universitaire de Paris and culminating in a spectacular final concert at the Eiffel Tower, directed by Rosetta Kuki. Two emerging artists join us today, alongside our expert this episode, the soprano Sumi Jo. In this episode, we'll be finding out how the person you are is just as important as the work that you're doing, the key things for singers pursuing an opera career to remember, and is there such a thing as being too perfect? As always, let's hear some opening words from our guests. Already they are like a product on stage or in the audition. So it's good to to see them like that, but at the same time, mm -mm, yeah, too perfect. I remember that I told them before that I wanted to to sing and they just said but why is that decision because we do, we don't even know your voice why are you you deciding this I try to have all these new ideas in my mind because I think that we are not the same the same human that we were yesterday or 1 hour ago so we are always changing what we think, what we, what we are, and what we share. First, let's delve into the backstory of our young artists. I'm Raúl Gutiérrez. I'm a tenor from Mexico. I'm 30 years old. I discovered opera at the age of 11 years old. And in, when I saw my, my first opera, that was La Boheme. And it was an internet. It didn't even was live. It was in, in internet. And... Uh, I decided that I I wanted to become an opera singer. And did you already have any experience of singing yourself or was it just a feeling and a wish? No, no, no. My family is not into music. It was uh, just me and and I found, I always found singing very natural, you know, but I was very shy. So I used to sing when nobody was at home. So, (laughs) but yeah, just me. Yeah. I'm Maria Belen Rivarola. I'm from Argentina and I'm a soprano. I started with music at seven, when I was seven years old. I studied piano first, and years after that, I started to sing, first in a choir, when I was nine years old, and then with opera, first time, it was when I was uh, 16 years old. I started to study, because I I was singing, not opera, no, just um, music, Mm -hmm. And I have this question about how to do it and to be better and how to don't uh, hurt myself, you know. I start to sing Folklore Argentino, which is easier, of course, the range you have to to sing. But I made a performance each weekend and I was concerned about that I didn't feel well when I end the concert, you know, I thought that maybe it was a method, you know, to enjoy, really enjoy and don't have these feelings about, oh, I'm, I'm making something wrong in, with myself, you know. My mom is a good singer, but she never study. But she's kind of reference for me, you know, I love her. And she pushed me so hard to, to start to sing and make this uh, career my life. But I never thought that I will... I never have a dream about the opera. I always try to uh, improve, you know, and uh, always try to get better in what I'm, I'm trying to give to the people. I'm trying to give to myself because, I, of course, I enjoy what I, I do and to sing. Um, for me, it's like kind of um, the way to feel free myself. When I start to, to study, uh, my teachers was uh, the first one who told me that I can make a career. 
no. And in the beginning, I was kind of, mm, I don't know, I don't know how it will be this career, but with the time and um, just improving and try to to be better, I start to know people and make auditions, and well, here I am. I watched Subi Joe's intense masterclass with several of the emerging artists, and I was really struck by how she handled her singers. You have a lovely way of being gentle, but also very strict. Are you also gentle and strict with yourself? It's like an oriental philosophy. There is a yang, there is an yin, there's a sun, there's a shadow. You know, having a like a strict, quite a hard life, but at the same time, you have also a life of like a relaxed, a little bit, you know, soft part of your life as well. When I see uh, young singers, obviously I want to transmit everything I know and uh, um, they need to work really hard with their techniques and with their, uh, you know, the way uh, they have to understand that uh, this um, job as a singer, uh, it requires a lot of sacrifice and so, so much hours and time you have to spend all yourself. So I want them to remember that. <laughs> but at the same time, doing a music is a, such a fortune and privilege for us. And so we need to uh, face our every day with joy and the, with, the, with the gratitude. And you were working with a couple of the young singers and over singing in recitativi is something that comes up, I think, quite a lot with young singers. What can they do to counteract that sense or that instinct to oversing in the recits? What should they be trying to do? You tried a couple of tricks today, which I thought worked really well. I actually tried to, you know, teach them many things. But the skill that I want to share was like, a, it's not enough just to express words. But I think it's quite important that the day see me as a uh, near how i breathe how i sing how i make the phrases and uh, when they uh, have to sing restativo when they have to do the bel canto when they have to sing the french or german repertoire you know somehow i'm trying to uh, sing with them uh, go through with them and so they can really they can feel it they can not only the, with the imagination, with words, but something, uh, you know, really, they can see what's going on. So um, I think uh, that's the way that I wanted to work today. Yeah, and I think that was so, we could see how successful that was with so many of the cases. And I was noticing sometimes the emerging singers, the young singers are so well musically prepared, but they haven't really put a lot of thought yet into the characterization and the emotion that something that you do so brilliantly. If singers get to that point where they're so well prepared musically, but they haven't layered in the character, what are your suggestions for them sort of connecting back to the character and the emotion? I always talk to them first, the technique, 
before we talk about personaggio, before we talk about emotions, because technique is the only only tool, only way that uh, we can rely we can rely on when you are not okay, when you are sick, when you know you have problems. If you have a solid technique, we can survive any time. That's for sure. And then when uh, uh, someone brings me like, I don't know, Rigoletto or uh, Julieta or whatever the personaggio are, I try to not explain what it is. I rather want to hear what they think about them. And then I suggest them to make a personalized because there are going to be like 1,000 Gilda, 1,000 Lucia all over the world. But, you know, the way you feel with your own experience, you can face the role and, uh, you know, making colors, the phrases. And uh, you have to understand also the, the every phrase that uh, you sing. And, uh, you know, that's uh, that you have to work your, on your own. Because teachers or mentors, we can help you, you we can guide. But the, the one that you have to understand is... Uh, you have to be lonely. You have to isolate in the room and, uh, you know, to spend your time and energy only for that. As well as that essential technique, what else makes Sumi Jo such a valuable tutor? She was very kind from the beginning, you know, and she has and had a great career and she's a diva, I mean, and she can be whatever she wants, but she's so great. She tried to to push you to do these things and give some new ideas. And first of all, that's it's what I will take for me. I mean, how to be, mm. you know, in life. You can be kind, you can be great, you can uh, try to share what you know with the, the people. And in second, of course, I try to have all these new ideas in my mind because I think that we are not the same the same human that we were yesterday or one hour ago so we are always changing what we think what we what we are and what we share i wondered if having spent time with them whether sumi joe can predict how our emerging artists will fare in their careers these young singers are different than I was young because when I was young, you know, when I have to learn a part, you know, there were no YouTube channels, there were nothing. I have to really go through the page by page and learn the part and language, all that. But now young singers, you know, even they are very young age, they uh, come to like auditions, uh, competitions, uh, they are prepared and they know so many things. And I don't know if it's an imitation or, or their own way. I, I cannot tell, but uh, they look so professional. And uh, sometimes I wonder if, if they are so advantaged like on so young age i don't know how they can continue to to be like i don't know when they are 60 years old or 70 years old you know sometimes it's a little bit sad that they lost a little bit of like a freshness a lot of like uh, something that in genuine no? like a, uh, i don't want them too perfect on stage something that uh, i can imagine i can imagine and that you know i can see that that they can do something but already they are like a product on stage or in the audition so um, it's good to to see them like that but at the same time mm -mm. Yeah, too perfect. But we have to see. There are so many good young singers nowadays, and uh, it all depends on the, you know, also the destiny, all the luck in their lives. <laughs> but for some young artists, getting into the career in the first place is not straightforward. Let's get back to Raoul watching La Boheme on the internet as a boy. What was it that got you from that moment to thinking, actually, this can be a career for me? It was hard because, uh, as I told you, I used to sing when nobody was there in front of me because I was very shy. And uh, I remember the first time that I sang in front of my parents was um, because I, I got an invitation to sing for in an event, like a funding dinner for missions. So that was the moment when my parents uh, listened to me for the first time. I invited my, my parents, so it was uh, also like a plan to show my voice to them, you know. <laughs> Did they like it? We'll find out later. But before that, let's listen to how far he's come. Morte nel 
suo mistero le diverse bellezze insieme confonde Many singers struggle to start their careers in the first place, even ones who we think of as successful today. The path is, as we all know, not necessarily smooth. I asked Sumi Jo for some advice on achieving a long-term career in opera. Mentally, you have to be really strong. And then you got to be always positive. You are ready to spread your uh, you know, positive uh, vibes to people surrounded by you and also to the society and to the world. And because we are missionary to give our, you know, beauty to the world, and so you have to be a beautiful person for the first place. To be beautiful, to be healthy, you have to work out, you have to read a lot of good books, and you, have, you need to smile all the time, to be generous, to be kind. And then uh, when it's necessary, you isolate yourself and you prepare to be a perfect uh, artist. And you go out and uh, whatever you prepared, whatever you're ready, and uh, you have a big smile and uh, try to give, give, give. I truly believe that uh, that's our mission, that's our job, to make a better place. In those situations where you do have that sense of giving and keeping that positivity and optimism, how do you get through those times? Because it's not always easy for us to stay positive and give and give. When is it that you get something back for yourself? How do you how do you balance that in your life? I'm a person who used to give because I always thought that you know giving is much better than you know I receive. Everybody's a different, but uh, when I was a little, I always felt so. Um, happy when I share or when I give something. I don't know. That's that's me. So uh, obviously there are other artists, you know, they're a little bit more, you know, they think of themselves. It's, it's sometimes, you know, I meet um, uh, singers when they do the, they, when they give uh, master classes, they say, why we have to reveal our secrets? We discovered the secrets of success. You know, we, we went through so many difficult time and all that. And I don't want to just give the students just, you know, like in five minutes. Well, I, I, it makes me a little bit laugh, a little bit smile, <laughs> because <laughs> it's, you know, a little bit surprising, you know, somebody, some singers, they're thinking that way. I mean, you know, if you don't want to uh, reveal your secret of success, just don't give the, your masterclass. Because if you don't have the love for young uh, singers, you, you don't, if you don't want to be generous, just don't do it. Obviously, I'm a human being, so I, I feel <laughs> sometimes sad. You know, there are some bad news in the world or in Korea or my family. But always I have my music. I have uh, my adorable disco music <laughs> when I was uh, 20s. Not only classical music, you know, musicals. I love jazz, you know, all kinds of music. So the music gives me a lot of energy. And when I feel sad and when I feel tired, you know, I exercise a lot. I work out and uh, I try to laugh a lot. So, you know, thank God I, I have that kind of a temperament. So it's a good thing. What other positives there are emerging artists, both of them already award-winning and with busy careers, getting from Opera for Peace? As young opera singers, we sometimes we just think about singing and show our voices and that's it. But being here... I can realize that I can be a, a person that can make a change to the world, you know, not just singing, but through my singing, like send a message of, message of peace, of union, you know, and it's something that we don't realize that we, we can do that. 
Opera for Peace gave me the, the opportunity to continue grow. You can have everything or feel that you have everything, but you must never stop to search for something else, to be more than you can expect about yourself. Of course, I have a lot to learn, maybe until I die, you know. <laughs> now back to Raoul's story. Did his plan work? Did that funding dinner serve its purpose and convince his parents he could succeed? Not at first. Well, actually, I, I'm an architect, but I, I wanted to, to study music first, but my parents didn't allow me. So, I, so that's why I studied, uh, studied uh, architecture. Um, and as soon as I finished my studies, I, I started music, my singing lessons. But it wasn't until the age of 24 that I started with a teacher, with a voice teacher. Before that, I, it was just me. Did you have a sense that you started a little, I mean, it's still very young, but sort of late in inverted commas. Did you have a sense that you were having to catch up? Yes, yes. It, it was always in my mind that, uh, and I, uh, I, I was feeling like very insecure because of my age, you know. But then um, uh, during these years, uh, I've learned that in a sense, age doesn't matter that much, but you're background first and then the the people you're studying with um that's the most important in fo focusing in your in your dreams and we're in being very uh disciplined and and just doing your work Learning is a two-way process. It's not only our emerging artists who are still growing, as Sumi Jo explains. For example, today I worked with my my singers, and they, you know, I can uh, I could see that they developed something, they learned something. So it makes me so happy because I learned from them also. Because uh, many people say, "Oh, you must be so tired today." No, I'm not tired at all. I'm full of energy. I'm full of gratitude that I I received from them uh, incredible energy from them. I asked Raúl and Maria how we can make the opera world a better place. Be honest to to the people, uh, but uh, also with ourselves. Uh, say to others when things are not working out, when something when things are not right, and be kind with others because uh, I think that's the most important thing. We we for we forget to to take care of others' feelings, others' um, rights. And uh, yes, I think that's the most important, yeah. First, I think we must feel that what we do is not for ourselves, it's for everyone. And I always think that when I'm performing, someone needs my art. I think the music can change people's life. And 
you can be a good person, a bad person, um, whatever, but there is no many people in the world that don't like the music, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to Sumi Joe, Maria Belen Rivarola and Raul Gutierrez for joining me today on Opera Vision. And thanks to you for listening. There's plenty more online at operavision.eu where you can see the Opera for Peace masterclasses with Eileen Perez and Brian Jade in Paris, Il Viaggio a Rems from the Academia Rossiniana's Alberto Zedda, the final of BBC Cardiff Singer of the World with Nombule Loyende, and Cendrillon by Viardot in the performance from the Palau de les Arts. I'll link to those in the show notes and give details on the other music extracts you heard in this episode. We'll be going topical on the 1st of November 2023 with a discussion on the representation of Asian culture in opera. This series is edited and produced by Karen Piri and curated and hosted by me, Nina Brazier. Opera Vision is co-funded by the European Commission. Music